Welcome to my Rayman 3 Fan Remake Devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. Alright, let's dive in. Before I continue on with the wildlife and such, I'd like to add in the second area, so why don't we kick this off with a montage again. This mushroom is just a yellow mushroom with a different color texture. In the original, this area had some water and waterfalls. I followed Prismatica Dev's tutorials for water shader, and this is the effect. I also added the water shader to this area over here. The shader is very simple, but I'm not going to go over it since I'd be pretty much just repeating the same thing that Prismatica Dev said in his video. So if you're interested in how this works, just go watch that video. By the way, I made this particle effect that spawns whenever rain walks in water. But I'm not going to go over how this is connected in this video. I think all the footstep response stuff will fit better in a different video. Let's move on to the bouncy mats. These are pretty cool because the bouncy animation is also done on the shader. So here's the ZBrush sculpt and then the texture. I used the cloth shading model, but I don't think it's really necessary here. It doesn't change much visually. Another thing I added that probably no one will notice is a tiling detail normal. But now at least you know, and that's enough for me. Now for the bouncing animation, here I have this bounce time variable. For now, think of it as just a time node because it is essentially that with one change. So by feeding the time node to the sign function, I can make the bouncy mat move up and down since it's plugged here to the Z axis and then to the world position offset. And now it's just a matter of masking out the edges of the, 
of the bouncy rag. So the bouncy animation happens in the middle and gradually fades out as it goes outward. So the mask is kind of done how it is in the butterflies, where I find the distance from the object's pivot point, except this time I keep a gradient. And it would seem that this is all we need, but this is what happens when I start jumping on the bouncy mask now. As you can see, all of them are moving. The simplest way to fix this would be to use a dynamic material instance, but at the time I did not know about those yet, so I had to come up with a different solution. I mask out the bouncy mats with the player's location, so now it will only move the cloth piece that Raymond actually jumped on. To be able to feed in these custom variables, you need to make a material parameter collection, like this one I have over here, bounce trigger, and it has the two parameters I made, bounce time and that's a float and a vector that takes in the player location. So now let's move to the jump rag blueprint to actually set these material parameters. Let's start with on component begin overlap. So once Rayman overlaps with the jump rug, this part is the same as with the caterpillar. So it just launches him up. However, here we set the player location parameter to this actor's location. It doesn't really matter if I feed in here this actor's location or player's location since they're pretty much in the same spot once the overlap happens. And then I set the time value to some kind of starting time value that I set. Now, the bigger the starting time value is, the longer the bounce animation will be. And now let's go to event tick. So first we check if time is larger than zero because it initializes as zero. So until Rayman overlaps with the jump rug, it won't be anything else than zero because that's when we set the, start the time to some kind of starting time. And then the bouncing animation happens. So we feed in the time value to the material parameter. And every frame, as long as time is bigger than zero, we decrease its value. So this way the animation lasts only until time reaches zero, which is perfect because remember, I'm feeding this time value into a sign function and sign zero is also zero. So this way I'm sure that once time reaches zero, the jump rock will also be in a neutral position and not stuck somewhere in the middle of the animation. For the turtles, I have this basic functionality where when two turtles are next to each other, they emit this particle and play this animation. Once I run up to them, they kind of stop, start staring at me. If I move too close, they kind of hide in their shell. Although I would like for this animation to be maybe a little more pronounced. It's hard to notice that they're actually hiding in their shell. And also I haven't made the ability to kick the turtles. So basically, as they're not really done yet, let's just look at the models themselves. I'll go over them in a separate video once they're actually finished. Also, I would like for everyone to see that there's a turtle chilling here in the water. scared yet? Well, you should be. I painted him in ZBrush because since he's always hidden in the trees and very small, I don't think there's any reason to make a separate texture for him. Just painting in the colors will do the trick. In the original game, since he was just a 2D plane with a texture, all he could do was just wink. However, since I made an actual model for him, I decided to make him look at the player at all times. I think this makes him a little more scary. To make him look at Rayman, I separated this monster into two parts. One is the eye and one is the pupil itself. The pupil has this pivot where rotating the pupil makes it travel naturally on the eye. And then in the blueprint, all that I'm doing is I use the find look at rotation node to set the pupil's rotation to be looking at Rayman. This node for its calculations takes in the, st the location of the pupil and the location of the player and does all the rest. The only other thing I had to do is to kind of clamp the pupil's movement so it doesn't move out of the eye like this. And I do this using our trusty dot product. 
I bas basically check how disaligned the eyes forward vector is from the rest of the monster's forward vector. And once it reaches some kind of value, I feed it into this branch over here so it no longer sets the pupil's rotation. Although looking back at this, I think it would be simpler to just clamp the rotation values using some kind of clamp node. Okay, now these guys really annoyed me. Every one of them is pretty much different. And they're, I think they're used only here in the whole game. So it kind of pissed me off how much time I need to spend on them just for this one little tiny area. So in retaliation, I made them as lazily as possible. These are not my proudest sculpts. I even painted them in ZBrush so I don't have to deal with any texture painting. However, that also happens to be a good optimization. The lucky part about these gnomes is that actual real-life garden gnomes I don't think look much better, so that kind of works out. This one's gonna get me banned. I wanted to try something a little more fun with these guys. So instead of making them just disappear when they get hit like in the original game, I make their heads fly off. And I made them physical objects so we can push them around. They deserved that. By the way, making Rayman push physical objects wasn't so simple since I'm using the collide and slide algorithm. To kind of move around that issue, I actually gave Rayman a second collider that's a little bigger than his normal collider. And all this physics collider does is it pushes physical objects around. It doesn't do anything with Rayman's movement or stuff like that. And also to make the heads kind of fly off and not just fall down as if there was no impact when they spawn, I add an impulse when they get spawned that's from the player's locations. So the direction in which the head flies off is kind of more natural. In the original game, when you would walk on mushrooms, this particle would spawn and also the mushrooms would kind of bounce underneath you. So I kind of made a similar thing, except I gave the particle system some more color because it kind of looked like a fart, to be honest, when it was green. And now I think it looks a little more like mushroom spores. The blueprint is really simple and not much here is new. The only thing that we haven't seen before is this timeline over here. What this does, it kind of allows us to animate a variable over time using a curve. So if I click on this timeline, you see here is the curve that I made. And what this means essentially is that at the beginning of the timeline, so when it starts playing, the value of my float will be minus one, and it gradually goes from minus one to one over the duration of 0 0.3 seconds. You can see that variable that is updated in the timeline is fed into add world offset of the mushroom. So since it starts from minus one, I have a strong downward offset, but as the value updates, the mushroom slows down and then starts going back up again. And then once the timeline finishes, I snap the mushroom to its starting location. This is just a safeguard because the timeline doesn't guarantee the mushroom will return to its exact original location. So by jumping on the mushroom, a lot of times you could probably move it further and further away from its original position. As someone who really likes stats, let's go over some just like we did with the fairy council. So to make these two additional locations, I made 30 new 3D models, eight of which were the gnomes actually. So two terrain pieces, nine different tree models, two tree tunnels, one arrow rock, one flat rock, one wooden wheel, one wall mushroom, and one tall mushroom. The butterflies, the turtles, the wall monsters, and the caterpillar. Combining this with the fairy council location, this adds up to 92 different 3D models. To be clear, I'm just talking about environment stuff, so I'm excluding everything that has to do with Rayman or the Crab Ninja. 
Now for the shaders, I made the shader for the but butterfly, for the bouncy mats, the tall mushroom shader, a shader that just takes in vertex color for the wall monster or the garden gnomes, the water shader, a variation on the rock shader to make the glowing rock, and two new particle materials, one for the turtle hearts and one for the water splash. So, so that's seven new materials and altogether 13 different master materials. For this location I made five new particle systems, two for the butterflies, one for the turtle, one for the water splash and one for the mushroom spore. So all together we have 12 particle systems so far. There were no new texture atlases or tileable textures, but seven new dedicated texture sets. One for the mushroom, one for the tall mushroom, one for the butterflies, one for the wall mushroom, the red mushroom, the caterpillar, and the turtle. So altogether, that's 11 different dedicated texture sets and 18 texture sets overall. All right, thank you for watching. In the next one, I'm gonna go over everything regarding the scoring system. So the crystals, the UI, the combo, stuff like that. Okay, see you next time.